This would be a sourdough bread recipe that you can work over the course of a couple of days and don't have to dedicate an entire day. This is why I call it a nine to five recipe. Make it work with what you got. 50 grams bread flour, cool water, 25 grams of your ripe sourdough starter. After eight to 12 hours, it's doubled and it's fallen down a little bit, but it'll still work just fine for this recipe. 315 grams warm water, 100 grams active starter, 10 grams of salt, stir to combine. Then we're gonna mix it in our flour. You can go all white flour or you do more, a greater percentage of whole wheat, just up the percentage of your water. Then we're going to mix it all together until it mixes nice and shaggy. Don't worry, it doesn't look like a dough just yet, but give it some time and a few simple folds. It's going to make it much easier to work with. I like to tuck it up in a ball after I formed it just to get some shape going. Cover it up, let it rest for 30 minutes. You're going to be hearing me say this a lot. 30 minutes later, it looks the same. Do some stretch and folds. Grab one side of the dough. We're going to go north, south, east, and west. Tuck it over, pull till tension stops, go as far as you can. Gonna do a couple slap and folds just to get some better tension going. This makes the next steps much easier. Stretch and pull, stretch and pull. If you start to see the surface start to tear a little bit, I just round it off. Cover the bowl on the counter, come back in about 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, second set of folds. We're gonna be switching some coil folds, much gentler much easier to work so we're just going to stretch it up and over and kind of fold it up and over itself creating layers in that gluten network to make it even stronger build some more tension just keep going i can usually do about four to six times before the dough starts to not work with me anymore so when you start grabbing around the middle and you try to bend it out it's just uh, resisting a lot just round it up again wait another 30 minutes you can see after this first shred of coil folds, it looks very smooth and not sticky anymore. So that tension's built up. Still going to need to build some more strength. You still see the dough ball is still slacking out on the counter. So 30 minutes later, we do the same thing all over again. Coil folds. I usually get it about four to five folds, so just like usual. It starts tightening up on me. I just round it off. At this point, you should start to be able to see a little bit of fermentation bubbles. We're about an hour and a half into the whole process. Covered up. 30 minutes later, our last strut of folds. So it's starting to hold its shape a little bit better. I only got about three folds in and I can't hold it no more. As you can see, our gluten network's holding up very well. This is all real time. The other sets of folds, uh, the dough ball started to fall apart. At this time, it's holding its shape really well. We're gonna finish the rest of the bulk fermentation in a, in a bowl, we can see the measurements. Usually when I get about 75% of the way to one liter, that's when it's uh, perfect for me. 78 degree dough temp, throw it in the oven. I got about halfway to where I want it in. It's about 12 o'clock, so I got to go to bed. So I'm going to throw it in the fridge overnight. One hour room temp in the morning. We're good to go to shape. It's no longer sticky, very wobbly. We're going to do a little bit of pre-shape. Just take a, a bed scraper, knock it around on the sides, round it off. Let it rest 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to do the final shaping. Flour the top of the surface. Rub it down a little bit. Flip it over onto the floured surface. And we're working with the sticky side up now. Degas it just a little bit. This is going to just help prevent any really large holes forming in your dough later. Form it into a rough rectangle. We're going to take one side and make a letter fold. Go halfway across. Fold your next fold a little across the center. Pinch it together. And we're going to take the long side and tuck and roll just like you're making a baguette. So you want to build that tension. That is the best way to get a really good oven spring. You need that tension for that dough to go upwards and not flatten out. So just get into a nice tight log. I like to tuck the ends up and under themselves. You don't have to do this step, but you might have a kind of squirrely swirl at the end. But it's more appearance than anything. I like to make an, another couple of nice rolls to get some nice good tension going. Once we get it that shape we want, we're going to dust the Bannington basket with rice flour or all-purpose flour, whatever you want. This is going to help prevent it from sticking. You can use the liner in there, or what I like to do is just cover it up. I do a couple stitches across the top to get some more tension. A little more rice flour into the fridge for about 10 hours. Got to go to work. Most recipes are going to say pop it in the fridge straight away and it'll be perfect when you pull it out. In my experience, I need two to three hours at room temp to get just right. It passes the finger poke test. It makes a dent and springs back very slowly. If you poke it, it springs back immediately. It's underproofed. If it's completely sticky and slack, you're overproofed and you're going to end up with a pancake. 
make one nice score across the top at about a 90 degree angle. That's going to be your expansion score to help it rise up and not spread out or bust at random places. Use a preheated Dutch oven that's preheated at 450 degrees. Spritz some water into the Dutch oven. Extra steam never hurt. Throw it in for 20 minutes, cover it at 450 degrees, pull it out, see if he messes up or not, and we did not. It looks great here. Another 20 minutes at 450 degrees. If you're like me and you like your bread nice and dark golden brown, darker than this, I throw in for another 2-3 minutes. Just get to what color you like. Just don't, don't go crazy on it. You don't want uh, some black bread coming out. That looks perfect to me. Nice ear. Lots of good flavor in there. So take it out of the Dutch oven, let it rest for about an hour. If you slice straight into this, it's going to be really gummy. Cut it up. Make sure you put a towel on your cutting board, not like me, so it don't slide. Good ear, nice open crumb. Overall, really happy with this loaf. Let's go ahead and eat this thing. Some beef tallow garlic confit. Those extra holes like to catch the extra oil. Nice crunch, chewy and light texture. This is a 75% hydration dough. If you learned anything from this, feel free to like, comment, subscribe for more. We'll see you next time.